Hi, Mohamed El Mala here. I wanted to show uh, a case of how I manage a small pupil. Uh, you can see this pupil is somewhere between probably about three and a half to four millimeters in size. Uh, and I uh, start out by making my paracentesis. I inject preservative free uh, lidocaine. And then we're going to use uh, um, uh, epinephrine. I use that to uh, stabilize uh, the pupil so hopefully it doesn't get any, any smaller in the case and then we use a dispersive viscoelastic here we're using viscoat this helps to coat the endothelium and can provide some uh, viscodilation we want to make sure we're nice and well centered here with our scope and we're comfortable uh, i use 0.12 forceps to to stabilize the globe i use this by grabbing the uh, the paracentesis and then i use my uh, keratome blade to make my main incision At this point in time, you can consider using any uh, pupillary expansive uh, device, whether it's a Malugan ring or, or something else. But in patients of a pupil this size, usually I will um, just go ahead and proceed with surgery. We, make, uh, we start the capsulorexis with a cystotome. Uh, we make a continuous uh, curvilinear motion. Uh, we've already ra raised the flap without having to make multiple passes. We use our retrata uh, forceps or capsulorexis forceps to uh, continue the uh, the capsorexis you can see here we're not afraid to go underneath uh, the iris margin it's uh, highly uh, unlikely uh, for these uh, capsorexis to run off uh, i don't know what's something about the way the iris is or the way the, the iris keeps it kind of uh, changes the vector forces makes it unlikely for these to run off we're going to tent up the capsule here uh, as we uh, hide it dissect it's very common with these small pupils to get some iris prolapse. So if we see that happening, we need to stop injecting BSS uh, so the iris does not prolapse in these cases. And then we go in with our phaco probe and we're going to proceed here with our uh, phaco chop technique. Uh, I do a horizontal uh, chop. And let's see here. We're getting a decent chop here. Yes, we've separated the uh, the uh, nucleus into two hemi-nuclei, and then we're rotating here, um, and then we're going to continue uh, to uh, to chop this cataract. So now we've got one hemi-nucleus. We'll do another horizontal chop. And the nice thing about phaco chop is it does allow you to do uh, more readily do small pupil cases because you're not making a groove with the phaco probe uh, and you're reaching underneath uh, the anterior capsule with your second instrument and so you really don't need a huge dilation in order to be able to do this comfortably here we're attempting to take out our first uh, quadrant And this is, once again, an unedited video. I haven't seen this video in, in a few months. I just made a note to myself that it was uh, relatively good quality. So here we go. We've removed one, one quadrant here. And it looks like we're going to try and remove the second quadrant. We separate it out. Uh, we'll make sure, want to make sure that we've got a good... Um, crack and separation so the piece can be pulled into uh, the iris plane or the anterior chamber and if we're having trouble with that we can always use our second instrument to uh, pull that piece up you can see that the iris does limit us a little bit here as far as the piece being able to roll and tumble as we do phaco it's also important here that we as we do this as we do this that we don't uh, capture iris into the phaco probe especially in a patient who's got a floppy iris uh, the iris can be quite mobile and you're already phacoing close to the iris uh, the, to the pupillary margin we want to make sure we don't catch uh, iris in our phaco probe so here it looks like we're going to try and remove the heminucleus it is obviously uh, larger and will not tumble as well but once again we're going to take our time with this we may even use our second instrument to chop a little bit more but we're making good progress. We want to keep our second instrument behind the piece. I do this continuously throughout, and that'll help keep the posterior capsule back um, as we do our last uh, 
piece of the nucleus here. And we can see we did a good hydrodissection. There's very little uh, cortex. We did a good cortical cleaving hydrodissection, which is also nice in these cases, not to have to worry about going in with IA. Uh, we're just going to remove some uh, nuclear fragments that may be present here. And then I'll probably take a capsule polisher now and just polish the, the posterior capsule. Of course, the patient uh, is just, just under the topical anesthetic, and they will uh, close their eyes, and the eye will bell, you know, have a, the pupil will uh, rotate up. The eye will rotate up. So we're just, uh, what I did there is I just hydrated. Uh, I uh, made sure there was no material remaining in the wound in the paracentesis, and here is a silicone tip and Terry Squeegee, which we're going to use to polish the posterior capsule and remove any lens fibers that may be on the posterior capsule centrally. And here's a viscoelastic. I'm going to inject the viscoelastic not directly into the bag, but I've learned now to inject the viscoelastic uh, to each side of the wound. So if there's any um, lens fragments that may be hiding in the fornix area that they come out uh, while I do the uh, inject the viscoelastic. Uh, so they're, they're exposed. So now we've got the capsular bag filled with viscoelastic. We can inject uh, the lens into the capsular bag. Uh, I don't typically use a Lester hook or anything else to dial the lens in. I just go ahead and go in with my phaco probe. The eye is already filled with viscoelastic. I go in dry. I don't start irrigating until I, I'm, I, like, until I see the lens already starting to unfold, which is doing here. And then I go in here in, in viscoelastic mode with pretty high uh, vacuum and aspiration rate in order to remove uh, the viscoelastic as well as any nuclear fragments or, cor or lens fragments that may be present and you can see those come out here. I'll then we'll uh, switch to a more controlled irrigation aspiration setting and uh, typically we'll usually go behind the lens and uh, aspirate any viscoelastic that may be present behind the lens although I suspect most of it has already come out in the uh, viscoelastic mode but I do this for the sake of completion and and uh, being complete and not missing anything here. Uh, oftentimes when the pupil is this small, I'll go in with a second instrument and just take a peek underneath the iris to make sure there's no uh, remaining cortical material or anything that's easily uh, aspirated with my phaco probe. So I use this instrument here uh, called the Charvel, uh, which I use to um, push and retract the iris. You can see there is some material there, so I'll go in there here and I'll use my IA to remove that piece of uh, cortex. So it is helpful to do this. It is helpful, to, you know, to remove as much of this cortex to so hopefully leave uh, none behind. And you can see also we get a chance to check that our IOL is inside the capsular bag. It's behind the anterior um, capsular. Uh, it's, it's behind. The, it's behind the anterior capsulotomy. And this is a Connor one, which I'll use to retract the iris uh, in this area as well. And I see there's some more uh, cortical material here, very little, uh, but nonetheless, we'll go ahead and attempt to, to remove as much of that as we possibly can. At some point in time, uh, we have to realize that perfect is the enemy of good, and we don't want to keep being too aggressive and risk having uh, a problem or, or a complication, especially when the, the, the remaining material is just so little. So uh, we're pretty confident here that we've gotten all the cataract out. There's no pieces left. I'll go ahead and irrigate out again, make sure there's no uh, pieces hiding there in the, um, in the angle. Uh, the pupil's already come down. Uh, it's been down. And now we're just going to hydrate the wounds and make sure that we have an adequate uh, pressure to hydrate the moon, main wound first. And then with the second, with the paracentesis, I inflate the anterior chamber and then I hydrate the, the paracentesis, make sure the IOL is back, um, hydrate the, the wound, and we'll check to make sure that everything is, is watertight and we like the pressure where it's at. So it seems a little bit low here. I'll probably uh, put some more BSS. There we go. I'll put some more BSS into the anterior chamber. Still a little bit low. We may have a leak at the, at the main wound, so we'll go ahead and hydrate the main wound again. After doing that, it seems a little bit firmer there as well. And so now we're going to, yeah, perfect. So now it is uh, nice and firm and not too, uh, not too soft, not too firm. We'll check the wounds, make sure they're nice and watertight. 
So thank you for watching. Uh, this is just one case uh, showing a small pupil. I wanted to illustrate it with you uh, to show you uh, obviously that uh, you know one way to manage uh, small pupils. Uh, I think phaco chop really helps. Uh, using a second instrument to attack the iris can help make sure there's no remaining material. Um, using the uh, 0.1 forceps to stabilize the globe while you do the capsulotomy can also be very helpful. Uh, you know, I'm sure you manage a lot of small pupils yourself. If you have anything else you do or differently or do differently, uh, please drop in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this uh, helpful and useful to you.